You're listening to the Public Health Entrepreneurs Podcast with your host, Dr. Charlotte Huntley. Greetings, everyone, and thank you for joining me on this episode. On this podcast, we explore topics of interest for professionals at this intersection of public health and entrepreneurship. My name is Dr. Charlotte Huntley, and I'm really happy that you've decided to join me on this episode. I'm a public health entrepreneur with over 25 years of experience in healthcare and public health, and I've supported many entrepreneurs along the way. I'm excited to support you through this podcast as well. On this episode, I'd like to chat with you about what it means to have CEO time. What is CEO time? It's a great question. Maybe you've never heard of that phrase, but I'd like to talk about it with you on this episode. My coach, whose name is Natalie Ektal, she's hosted the Biz Chicks podcast for many years. She's recently rebranded to niche down and serve nonprofit consultants. So she's changed and started a new podcast, but I've been working with her for a few years now, and she often uses this phrase. She teaches us the role. She talks about what it means to be a CEO, business owner, and a founder. And she talks about CEO time. She always talks about or reminds us of the role as the CEO of our business. So she had a recent episode where she talked about this on her new podcast, The Biz of Nonprofit Consultants. And her name again is Natalie Ekdahl, if you'd like to check out her her podcast. She talks about the roles or reminds us of the roles of the CEO of our business. We are responsible for the, we can only be the visionary. No other member of our team can be the visionary. It's our responsibility as the business owner, the CEO. Also, our responsibility is to lead and support our team, whatever that team looks like. And then also we are responsible. We are the sales department and we're responsible for business development as the CEO. So I want to just remind you of these things or mention them if you hadn't really thought about it quite like that before, because as a part of our function and serving in the way that we do in order to do this really well, to walk in the space as the CEO of our businesses, we have to have a strong team of support and we need to manage our time, meaning what we're doing in our business. For example, if we're spending a whole lot of time doing all the administrative tasks that maybe our administrative assistant could do really well, then that's not, that's taking away from our time to do that CEO work. If we are doing client work that perhaps one of our consultants on our team could be doing, that again is pulling us away from time that we could be serving in our CEO role. I think it's important to carve out time for this visionary work. I think it's essential for us to carve out time for this visionary work and to focus on our business development and supporting our team and having, for example, with my team, I have regular one to one on one meetings with my team members that helps me provide clear guidance to them, share vision, do a little bit of, there's a little bit of accountability there, building relationship and make sure that we're communicating well making sure that I have time to look at where the business is going. Are we on track for our goals? And what are our financials looking like? What's forecasted? What are we expecting to come into the business in the next few months? When are we able to afford as a business and for the investment of a new team member or software or services or support? So my coach talks about this all the time. It's really embedded in in my everything that I do in my business. I've worked with her for so long. I've really grasp this. And I want to share it with all of you listening to this podcast. So regardless of where you are in your business, this is something that either you are continually developing in, or you're refining to do better. So it's something we're always striving toward. And it's these are the things that only can be completed by us as the owner, as the business owner. All right. So it may take some time to sort through and figure out what is best for you because if you're just getting started, you are it. You are the solo person. You're doing everything. You have to do all those things for a while. That is absolutely true. One of the things that I work with our mastermind group members in our program is helping helping them, not telling them what they need to do, but helping them decide 
when they need to bring on those team members and what that looks like and how to structure that. And I'm sharing this with you on this episode because one of the things that you can do, regardless of the fact that it may take a while to really build to having this regular structure time and team members and all those things, one of the things that you can do right now to start to make sure that you are having that time to be the CEO is to block off on your calendar some incremental periods of time and mark them as CEO time. Literally put that on your calendar. And it may start out as one hour a week, especially if you're that solopreneur doing everything, right? You may start out with one hour per week that you mark as CEO time. And that means that you are not meeting with clients. You are not doing client work during that time. You're not creating social media images or drafting out a podcast episode, you're not doing those things. You are either being visionary, you are, and that could be looking at goals and making plans and where you want the business to go, deciding what your model is going to be, deciding on what team members you need to have, what the structure looks like. It could be being that leader and supporting your team. If you have a team already, looking at What can you do to further support your team member or meeting with your team member? What does that look like? And Or it could be sales. It could be drafting that proposal. Or more importantly, I'm going to say importantly, it could be like we talk about business development. So maybe it could be having time to think about what conferences you want to attend and maybe where do you want to have an exhibit booth to to meet new prospects. Or maybe what conference do you want to attend and do you want to apply to speak at that conference so that it maybe your ideal clients are in the audience and you decide as the CEO that I want to speak at this conference and be in front of this potential audience. Those are the things that you can spend your time working towards. So even if you are that solopreneur, that independent model that we talked about previously, if that's you right now and you're at that stage where you're doing all these things and you don't have a team member, then I think it's important to start somewhere. And if you start with just marking one hour a week, and even if you're saying, oh my gosh, I don't have one hour a week, maybe it's one hour a month, but it just needs to be marked clearly as CEO time so that you can get into the practice of having that time to be the visionary, to provide the support for your team or decide what that team looks like and to do business development strategy for your company, all right? Where just start where you can and build from there. I think that that is my big takeaway from you, for you. So that if you are already doing this, then look to improve and give yourself bigger blocks of time. I'll go ahead and tell you one more example. So maybe this is another thing that's exciting to build towards. So if you get into the habit of, once a week, once a month, whatever it is, you build that cadence where you have this regular CEO time. I encourage you to look at your calendar and maybe once per quarter, you find the time, the opportunity to step away from everything and you do a CEO retreat and take yourself somewhere, check into a hotel where you are by yourself to focus on the business. You can be the visionary You can draft out the plans. You can mark up this chart of what your team is going to look like. You can look at all of the possibilities for conferences and decide where you're going to go and which ones you're going to apply to speak versus which ones you're going to place ads versus which ones you're going to set up an exhibit, you know, in the exhibit hall. Those are things that you can do. And you can do that retreat to just focus on the business. That's amazing. I know I have colleagues that do that. And they don't even leave their town. They just go across town, check into a hotel, really nice hotel, order room service and work on their business. Those are things that I think are important. And I want you to embrace them as essential parts of being the the CEO, the visionary, the leader, having that CEO time in your business. Start integrating it, implementing it as wherever you are, as much as you can, even if it's one hour, once a month get that on your calendar. CEO time is important. Now, in our mastermind group program, I talk about this all the time. 
I share much more detail and I go into what I do. And it's a big part of why we have these retreats. So in our mastermind group program, it is ideal for those of you who are established entrepreneurs. You've already started your business. You're generating some revenue and you are, you're looking to build and grow and scale that business. You are able to join this community. We meet online and we also meet in person twice a year. So twice a year, we have two day retreats. And a big part of that is so that we can have CEO time. That is a supercharged CEO retreat. And you really get a major dose of what CEO time is like. All you have to do is show up. My team and I take care of everything else. You're well cared for. We shower you with lots of gifts and all the essentials that you need to be successful during that retreat and and beyond. And it's it's just amazing to watch how people are transforming really quickly during that CEO retreat that we have with our mastermind group. Now, enrollment is only open twice a year for our program, and that's in June and December, and only to people who have submitted an application. Now, we do have a lot of new applications. I'm excited about that. So if you've applied and you haven't heard back from us, don't worry. At the time that I'm recording this, we are leading up to our retreat. But by the time you hear this, we will have already returned. So we are planning to meet with the people who have applied. We'll start meeting with you early and chatting with you, but just make sure that you apply because that's how we know you're interested. If you'd like to know more about our mastermind program and how to submit your application, simply go to publichealthentrepreneurs.com. From there, you're able to submit your, read more detail about the program and submit your application. You'll also find the link to that website in the description for this episode. One more thing I'll ask you to do is share our website with a colleague or friend that you think would be a good fit for our mastermind program, but certainly for this podcast. All right, everyone. Until next time, have a fantastic rest of your day. Thank you for listening. Visit publichealthentrepreneurs.com to learn more.